By now, you should have found the worksheet for calculating the compressive strength of a cylinder. It's illustrated for you in this video. We're going to take a look at the calculations and see how what considerations are important for us to take into mind. So let's zoom in just a little bit here. And first, we'll take a look at the average diameter. So our diameters are measured to the hundredth of an inch, as is specified. We have 5.99 and 6.02, as was mentioned in the previous video. So to get the average strength, we tally those two numbers up to get 12.01. Of course, then dividing them by two to get the average gives us the number of 6.005. Now, with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, fives get rounded up. So our average diameter is 6.01. Let's slide down a little bit, take a look at the area. The area equation is referenced for us down below as pi d squared over 4 or pi r squared. Now we encourage everyone to use pi d squared over four because it's just a little bit easier and a little less confusing. So the diameter is the place to start. Let's square that diameter of 6.01. You can either use a square key or if you'd like to just type it in twice, 6.01 times 6.01, feel free to do so. That'll square it times pi. Now pi can be either 3.14, just plugging in those numbers, or you can certainly use the pi key as well. So that would be multiplied times that diameter, and then divided by four to give us the average area, cross-sectional area. If you use 3.14 for pi, you'll end up with the answer you see here of 28.45. If you use the pi key, which is okay too, it'll be a little bit higher number, but that's fine. So then the calculation for compressive strength is the maximum load divided by the average cross-sectional area, which in this case equals 4,445 PSI, that will be rounded up to the nearest tens place or digit to be 4,450 PSI. Of course, a test result is the average of two compressive strength tests. And we just illustrated one for the purpose of this video. Finally, the fracture type is the last item that you need to report on your compressive strength test. We see illustrated for us at the bottom of the page the various types of fractures that we should note. In our report, simply identify the letter designation you see illustrated here. These are all AASHTO designations except for the last couple that is crumbling and crushing of the upper quarter. However, we know what you're talking about when you reference those letters. So that's the conclusion of our calculations. Feel free to play this video back again if you wish to uh, review the calculations. Hopefully you found them to be uh, relatively simple and we wish you success with your compression testing in the future.